Hi, this is Linda Epaye, owner and realtor at The Real Estate Shop, an energy worker in guiding you to make a house your home. And I'm here today with Dr. Michael Bittner, and we're gonna to continue to talk about feng shui. We've been doing that in the past, and we're gonna to continue to do that. So yeah, Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to go, but Linda is going to pose the first question. Maybe. Yes, so I had a thought. There seems to be two schools of thought here in the U.S. regarding feng shui. Traditional, and then, of course, we Americanize everything. So, <laughs> Western and traditional. What's the difference? Yes, there, there are kind of two principal schools, the form school and the compass school. Okay. And the form school is the oldest of the traditions, and that is the one that I am most versed in in practice. I have certainly read and understand aspects of the compass school. The compass school was um, formulated later on in China, and they both had to do, of course, with um, helping people create space that is positive for the flow of qi. But with regard to the form school, the form school was oriented around the environment. So oh. it traces its origins back to the planting of crops and to oh, wow. where people were buried and oh, the environment wow. itself. So um, when folks moved away from the mountains and they started to get out into the flatlands, then the compass school arose as an alternative. And so it was more oriented around, hence compass, directions, and would use oh. kind of numbers to calculate the way things are organized and arranged. Whereas the form school relies upon the environment and the Bagua. And the Bagua is that map, that ancient Chinese map that was really patterned after a tortoise shell. So it's quite interesting in that yes. regard. Yes, okay. Because in, in China, I mean, obviously they're aware of this energy, I think more so than we have been in the past here in the U.S., especially regarding building a home, where to build it, how to put oriented. it in, orient it, yeah. Yes. Where here, there's a subdivision, <laughs> they try to get the most houses out of the acre, and they're nilly-willy directions. Exactly, and what's interesting is that even in China, which is, you know, you know, we can go back and look at, they're the ones that created this, and for many, many centuries had relied upon it, you still get architects and occasional terrible flops that occur in China. And you, oh. it's kind of funny because you get online and you'll see the Chinese will post things like the worst feng shui building ever. Oh and like God. it might be in Shanghai or Beijing or something, but it's kind of amusing actually to go and look at. So, so they go, well, um, of course it's not doing well because it's exactly. energy is not well. Yes, yeah. but it is so true. And so when we think about the orientation, so it is most optimal to have your doorway face to the south. And that is the way yeah. to greet, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. Obviously in the Southern okay. Hemisphere it would be a bit different because okay. we want to orient the way the sun shines. And so it's also the okay. way visitors typically come. Ideally, for instance, if there was a body of water, that would be below you, it wouldn't be behind you okay. because you don't want it to break and come down. What you would put behind oh. you would be mountains or maybe okay. a fence or a line of trees. Because those for, are strong and grounding and, and sturdy. Protective. Oh, and protective. And so we think okay. about our backs. We don't have eyes oh, right. out of the back of right. our heads. So right. It's think. not good to set up your desk where you're, you're facing the wall and your back is to the door. Exactly. And when you do that, just think for a second, that doesn't feel comfortable. That's to me, it. it doesn't anyway. And that's that subconscious telling you. And when you're starting mm. to get any point, whether it's conscious or subconscious that's involved, it's detracting from the chi. If it's focused on something that's not you know, helping you to, you know, enjoy your day or to move forward in okay. a positive manner is actually detracting and harmful in that regard. So if we're subconsciously a bit concerned or worried because our back is to a door, mm -hmm. and this is also not just about a desk, it is about a bed. You don't oh. want to sleep with your head <laughs> um, oh. in front of a door. You want it away okay. from the door so that you can actually see if somebody, an oh. intruder or somebody was to come in. And it's just a basic comfort thing. And often, notice animals, how animals typically respond to that too. They will oh, orient themselves to, to look at a door right. or to look at the front entrance to the yard yeah. or something. Not, and then the people that are around them are the ones that they're like, okay, I know these people, they're fine, but the others that may be approaching me, I'm aware of and want to keep my senses 
That's a good point. We have a chair by our front room window, so it sees the entrance and it sees across the street. And so our dogs are watching to make sure people have the correct pass to be walking past our house, otherwise they're barking. So and, they are out there watching and yeah, doing their it. job. And so yeah. just like, I mean, and this is what's so funny because we as humans, we often get away from paying attention to nature. And as we say, feng shui mm -hmm. takes us back to paying um, attention to nature right in all its regard and that's not just plants and animals but or plants and animals but also even human nature so aboriginal societies you know Ooh. the ones that have actually paid more attention to nature whereas we in the western world have tended to drift away from it yeah and if we want to really heal and to see greater success in what we do and a healthier more joyful life then we need to once again reclaim what we what nature has presented to us right right yeah and so you you've said joy a few times which i totally yes i mean that's what you want in life you want joy i mean i don't think we've been put here to suffer although we do have to do some of that because that's how we learn and grow <laughs> that's just the way it is and the buddhists will certainly say that life is about suffering in many ways but that's, well yes and that does seem i mean yeah. when you're when you're suffering then you're like hmm i don't want to keep feeling <laughs> like this so maybe i should what should i do um, and so there's been lately this lady Marie Kondo that does organization um, and, and taking things that don't serve you, but her main point is, does it bring you joy to have it? Or is it, if it doesn't, then thank it and release it. Yes, and that's really a fundamental principle of um, decluttering and creating an environment that is conducive to health and wellness and and again pleasure and mm -hmm. good feeling good sensations and welcoming and so if it's your own home your own home and right. you go in it and you are immediately confronted by things that don't make you feel good right. or that somehow create a bad feeling or a negative feeling then that is definitely not something good to be going into the home and experiencing right and so i've just moved my office from a formal office into my home and so i have a bunch of artwork and i woke up this morning like at two o'clock thinking <laughs> i haven't taken it out of the box and it's because some of it is not going to serve the space and so I will do my muscle testing and saying, okay, can this one be released or can it serve in this environment? And I felt so much better this morning after I did that and knowing, okay, I have a plan. That box will get unpacked because it doesn't serve just sitting there. And it, it all can't serve. It was a much bigger space that I was in. So it, it can't all serve this smaller space either because then it would be too cluttered. And, and it may not be that it has to be like jettison. So if it still brings value to you and mm -hmm. you like it, right. and you're just saying, I just don't have space for it at this point in time, then it's fine to store it, but to store it properly so it's protected from the elements. And okay. then you might decide, okay, I'm gonna cycle through, much as a museum does. Oh, and so if you think about, point. if we really think oftentimes about our homes in terms of being like a museum, and we can change things out, and quite often people do this with seasonal decorations. Sure, sure. You know, they'll have some things that are nice that they keep, and that they really do enjoy. And yeah. they just store them properly and t in a tidy place. Right. And then, and they're protected and then they bring them out when the season it's appropriate. And then that way they keep the flow of energy going as well. Because it's okay. one of the other things. If we have things that are just sitting all the time in one place and never move, then it actually is once again stagnant, dull, Ooh, or even dead energy. Yeah. So changing that out is, is right. important. Yeah. Well, very good. So there you have it for today, talking about feng shui and energy and bringing joy. So if you have any questions, just send them to Michael or I and we can get those answered on our next show. So we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.